What does Aria going to school mean for you? Make me sad. Why does it make you sad? Because we're going to kindergarten. She is going to kindergarten. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Join You to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And I'm super excited about today's conversation because it's all about school days. And no, I am not talking about the Spike Lee film. Okay, although that is a classic. If you haven't checked it out yet, you definitely want to do that. We are all students. Students of life, that is. And as September rolls around and we head back into back to school season, there are a lot of things that you are probably considering if you are a parent. But then there are those of you who aren't parents and you are students of life. For those of you who are looking to relearn who you are in this season of your life and in your journey to purpose. No matter where you are in your journey, this episode is dedicated to helping you navigate the transition back into learning with joy, whether it's you or it's you with a couple of little people on the side. In addition to this, we also have a special guest for today's episode. So keep listening because you are sure to gain a lot of value and we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. (laughs) So whether you're a mom who's excited to have a few quiet hours to herself each day, or maybe you're a stay-at-home mom that is excited about the simple fact that you don't have to be responsible for planning every single moment of summertime fun. (laughs) I hear you and I feel you because I am you. Recently, I've been getting a ton of questions asking me how I feel about Aria going back to school. I'm excited. I know what it's like to be with Aria 24-7, 365, because I've been doing that for the past five years. Now is the time for Aria to spread her wings and take flight in the real world. I am excited for her to be learning, but if I'm being completely honest, given the fact that Aria's school is only going to be three hours because of the fact that we're still in a pandemic, they're not doing full day kindergarten. And so I do have a bit of um, reservation about that because in my mind, how much will she be able to learn in three hours? Part of me is a little bummed about the fact that she won't be getting the full six hour kindergarten experience. Um, I'm also a little bummed about the fact that I'm only gonna be getting three hours (laughs) because That is something that we look forward to when our kids go to school, right? Having those um, hours to ourselves to focus on work if you are a working from home parent or being able to run errands if that's something that you were planning on doing. But listen, at this point, I'll take what I can get. Okay. They're splitting the kindergarten sessions in half. So they have a morning session and they have a PM session. (sighs) Aria got the PM session. And... I mean, in some ways I was like, yay, because I'm not quite a morning person. But then on the other half, thinking about Aria and how she works best and what's best for her, I know that Aria is a morning person. She is up at 5.30, 6 o'clock every morning at the crack of dawn, playing, knocking on our door, asking for breakfast, snacks, and the whole nine. And so she's most alert in the morning. Something else that I've been considering about her going back to school is just this overall pandemic weirdness. The fact that Aria is going to have to wear a mask. (laughs) Just the fact that this will be her version of normal as she goes to school. And we all know that it's really not normal. Um, So helping her navigate through that is going to be interesting because being that she's been home, since the pandemic has started, um, this isn't something that she's ever really had to deal with in terms of wearing a mask every day, all day, or in this case, three hours as a necessity. The only times we would really wear masks is when we were going out in public, say to the grocery store or maybe to the library. But overall, we don't wear masks because we're home and we're outside and we're by ourselves. <laughs> so that'll be really interesting. Outside of Aria's experience and how she'll be transitioning, when I think about our experience in transitioning into a parent of a school-going child, if I'm being real with y'all, I think about being exhausted. <laughs> oh my gosh, I, I'm excited about the fact that she'll be going to school, but I'm not so excited about the the ways in which it will transform 
the way we have to engage with our day to day. There's going to be a lot of change, a lot of getting adjusted to a new schedule, a lot of creating a new schedule, a lot of figuring out things a lot along the way and what works and what doesn't work, prioritizing my calendar and when I can now meet with clients given the fact that my schedule and my day is really chopped in half. Um, it's going to be interesting. Needless to say, it's going to be interesting. But it's also already very overwhelming. <laughs> and this is coming from someone who is a joy strategist and I work with women to help them find less overwhelm. I find that I'm already getting exhausted with all of the emails that are coming from the school. They're sending emails about bus schedules. They're sending emails about lunch schedules. They're sending emails about coffee dates before school starts. They're sending emails about play dates for once school starts. It is a lot. But I have taken the approach that I also teach and preach to my clients of embracing the journey one feel good thing at a time. And I'm anchoring myself with a practice of gratitude and remembering that this is all good. This is all actually a blessing. And there are also very many things to be grateful about as far as this entire experience. I ground myself in gratitude thinking about the fact that I'm glad Aria gets an opportunity to get an education. So many kids around the world don't have that. I'm grateful for the fact that I have technology to keep me up to date with the things that are necessary in order to manage her transition back to school well. I'm grateful for the fact that there is a school system that cares enough about my child's education and her ability to transition into school well enough that they are sending me all of these invitations and updates and correspondences so that my child isn't left behind or just thrown into the mix of things without any type of understanding. All of these things are good problems. And then there's also a piece in understanding that this too shall pass. We're entering a new season and we're trying new things, so it does take a little adjusting. But eventually, like riding a bike, the more we do something, the better we get at it and the easier it gets. So that's the approach that I'm taking as far as Aria's transition into school. One feel good thing, remembering to focus on one feel good thing at a time, take it one breath at a time, one day at a time, and understanding that there is joy to be had throughout this entire process. But I'll definitely be sharing some solutions to help you who are moms, who may be feeling the overwhelm already <laughs> in the same way. If gratitude isn't enough for you and you are looking for tangible solutions to help you in this process, I'll be sharing some of those later on in the episode. But in the meantime, I also wanted to share some questions questions that I get for Aria. A lot of people have been asking me how Aria feels about going back to school and about all of the considerations that she has. But I am a very big believer in allowing our children to express themselves and speak for themselves and understanding the value and the importance of their voice and utilizing it. So today I have a very special guest that will be joining us on the podcast so that she can share a little bit about what she's looking forward to most as she enters her school days. Without further ado, here goes today's guest, the lady, the legend, our child, the brilliant Aria Reed. <laughs> well, right now, if you're watching on YouTube, you see that there are two people here, but only one of them will be interviewed today. And it is our baby girl, Aria Reed, who's starting school this fall. Say hi, Aria. Hi. <laughs> Here we go. So, Aria, one of the first questions that I received for you is, what are you most excited about as far as going to school? I'm excited to go to school, make up new friends. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why are you excited to meet new friends? Because I can't see my other friends. What I meet on what I saw at the other school. Oh, yes. What I forgot to mention here is that Aria was going to an immersion school a couple of years. Well, not at this point now. 
it was when you were three and a half, three and a half to going into four. Um, but then the pandemic happened. So she had to leave school. They did virtual learning throughout the rest of the year. And then um, because of the fact that we aren't fully out of the pandemic, since then, Aria has been homeschooled with me. So she, at one point she was meeting friends, but now it's going to be completely different. And I guess another big difference is that you're not going to be learning in another language. What do you think your favorite subject in school is going to be? Doing so much things, like doing the things what the teacher gives me. Like what? Like whatever it gives at me. Um, whatever it gives me. Do you know what, what I mean when I say what is your favorite subject in school? It's taking a nap at school and getting up. Doing everything like what I do at school. Mm. All right. So I'm going to define what a subject is, right? As far as classes. So when you have a subject in school, you have like reading, writing, math, social studies and science, arts and crafts. You have music. What's another subject? Um, gym Videos. is a well, you know, you may be right. Nowadays, videos may be a subject. <laughs> they weren't a subject when I was going to school, but they may be a subject for you. I, I, w I was doing that, like when I was at Jump Emergent School. Oh, that is true. Oh, so, all right. With all of that being said, now that you understand a little bit better what a subject is, what do you think your favorite subject in school is going to be? Doing what I do, like what the teacher gives me to do. Okay, your answer is still, still, still stays the same. I'll take it. So basically, you're going to be a very studious student that follows instructions. Right. I love it. So, what is the thing that you want to learn about most in school? Everything. A girl after my own heart. That's right. There is so much to learn about and know about and experience, right? Right. <laughs> now let's think beyond schooling and what you will gain as far as school. And thinking about the grand scheme of life, your life, and how schooling will help you as you grow up. What do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. Ooh, a doctor. Y'all, we're going to have a doctor in the family. Okay. Do you know that if you're going to be a doctor, you have to study a lot of math and science? Yes. Are you down for the challenge? Yes. Do you like math and science? Yes. You do? Yes. What do you like about math and science? So much. Like what? Color, do things. With math and science? Yes. <laughs> you know, well, so, uh, I'll take it. Maybe you got a different type of math and sciences happening in your mind. <laughs> but how do you think that going to school will help you in the future and in your goal of becoming a doctor? I don't know. Girl, most parents who are listening to this will probably tell you that you're right and they don't know either because so much of what we study is not actually what we end up doing in life. This brings us to the last question of this interview today and it is a biggie. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay, the last question is what brings you joy right now? Coloring and doing this episode. What? Okay, so I knew about coloring, but I didn't know that this episode would bring you so much joy. Why does it bring you so much joy? Because I didn't know you was going to say it. You didn't know that I was going to say what? Mommy does like to do her interviews on the fly. I didn't know if you would be just like doing this like I didn't know you was letting me edit the podcast too oh girl you're not editing the podcast I wish you could edit the podcast at some point since you like to be all up in my business anyway we are going to put you on payroll and you can most certainly edit the podcast <laughs> but right now we need you to learn the basics okay reading writing and arithmetic so that you can help us in our journey to purpose business sound good yes so what does that mean you're going to do in school? 
learn. I love it. All right. I think that you're going to do really well in school this year. And I'm really excited to learn about all of the great things that you learn while you're away. Yeah? Yes. All right. See you later. Those of you who are listening to this episode and not watching on YouTube aren't seeing what's happening. As I was asking Aria a couple of questions, Jace wanted to get in on the action. So we're going to ask him a couple of questions. All right, Jace, what are you most excited to learn about while Aria is in school? Uh, Truxes. You're excited to learn about Truxes. Okay. What about your ABCs and your 123s? Are you going to learn about your ABCs and 123s? Yes? Yes. What is your favorite color? Blue. What is your favorite number? Three. What's your favorite number? Three. <gasps> That's my favorite number. Did you know that? Okay. Since you are so smart and you are going to be at home learning a little bit more with mommy, I want to ask you if you can count to five. Can you count to five? One, two, three, four. Four. Well, there are five fingers up, and I guess we made it to the number four. Let's add one more. The answer is five. I think one, you did a great job. One, two, three, four. All right, so I guess you can count to four. We got a little more work to do. Uh, <laughs> one more question for you. What is one thing that brings you jo joy right now, Jace? Joy. Yeah, what brings you joy? Playing with Aria. Playing with Aria. Oh, but now that Aria is going to school, how do you feel about Aria going to school? Not good. Why? Because I said about Aria. Why? Because um, Aria will go to school. What does Aria going to school mean for you? Make me sad. Why does it make you sad? Because we're going to King of the Garden. She is going to kindergarten, but that's good because that means she's going to learn a lot of things and then she can come back and... She's going to kindergarten. Yes, Aria is going to kindergarten, but it's good because then that means she's going to learn a lot of things that she can come back and share with you. And it makes me play. And then she will teach you and then you can play. Yes. Okay, well, those are all the questions I got for you. You guys can go back to playing. Thank you for being on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Wasn't that so much fun? They are the absolute cutest. Like sometimes I think, dang, Lord, thank you for blessing me so much. They, they bring so much joy to my life. That was really fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed the conversation. But now that we've had a conversation, now it's time to dive into the solutions. For those of you who are parents and you are feeling a little overwhelmed by it all, how to find more back to school joy, even with the craziness that is sure to ensue. I'm here to bring those solutions to you, baby. And there are three in particular that I want to share with you guys. The first solution is to remember that life is a game. Remember to have a little fun, okay? Getting an education is a serious business. Have you guys seen the prices of tuition? Oh my goodness, it's crazy. But even with education being serious business, schooling doesn't have to feel like a chore. And taking your child to school or getting involved shouldn't have to feel like a chore either. The moment you begin to embrace the fun of any part of your journey, that's the moment that you're really able to unlock the magic. So with this, I want you guys to consider developing new, engaging, and fun interactive ways to integrate learning into your children's life. When you're asking your kids about how their day at school went or if you're going over homework, make sure that you're really listening to their responses so that you can start to notice areas or subjects where they may be struggling a little bit or where they may be finding some challenges. Some of the ways you can begin to notice where they may be struggling a little bit is to listen for hesitation when they're starting to talk about their school day or when they start to speak with a little bit of frustration. Um, in moments like that, take note. These are opportunities for you to create a new mindset around their experience of the part of their schooling that they're struggling with the most. If you need help figuring out ways to help them 
find more joy or fun in that learning, then you can totally dig into a brainstorming session with some friends and family. Or if you are looking to align yourself with a joy strategist, then you can definitely head over to my site, ericalassan.com, and you can book a one-on-one brainstorming session. You can turn it into a game and you can find supporting tools to support your child in engaging with those areas that they may find challenging with a new perspective. The point here is that you want to encourage learning, but also understanding that there is fun to be had in creating new fun ways to learn together. And you'll be surprised at what you pick up along the way too. The second solution is to remember that routines rule. And the reason why I say this is because oftentimes when people think of routines, especially if you're a visionary, as I am, you think of all of the things that you can't do because they're outside of the scope of your routine. And you think of all of the ways that you may be limited and the ways that you can't engage freely with the rest of your day. But remember, routines are simply an outline, a structure for you to follow as you're going into each day. And what you'll find is that routines actually don't inhibit you from living freely, but they actually give you space to live freely because you have a plan for how your day should go. You do the things in the allotted time slots, and then you know where you have pockets of time to play or engage in other things. But you also gain an awareness of one, how you're using your time, and two, more importantly, the ways in which the things that you're doing with your time are actually benefiting you overall. As you are establishing your routine, the first step in doing this is to create a vision. And I'm so big on vision. You guys know I talk about vision all the time. I have a whole six week workshop all about vision casting. How do you want your days to feel? How do you want your days to go? What do you want them to taste like? As you do this exercise of really engaging with a visual, or a vision of how you want your days to go, then you can begin to create a routine that reflects that vision. And with this, you will find that you'll gain so much freedom because you'll get all of the worky things out of the day. And once those are done, you can focus on all of your free time and really engage in your play. Which brings me to the third solution, juggling your joy. And as I'm saying this, many of you who are moms are probably thinking, what joy? I have no time for joy. There's too much to do all the time. I have to be all of the places. I have to do all the things. I have to involve myself with everybody's stuff. So first and foremost, for all of you who are moms who are listening, I need you to engage in some joy for yourself each day. If you need some guidance and how to even begin doing that and what that even looks like, I have the joy quest, which is on my site. And that is an exercise that will help you in that process. But when I speak about juggling joy, I'm talking about you as a family unit. Don't waste the little free time that you have each day trying to figure out what to do. (laughs) Okay, if you have some things on tap that you enjoy doing as a family, it makes it a lot easier for you to know how to utilize your free time in a constructive and a productive way that also elevates and amplifies the feel good feels. So rather than searching for things to do, keep your joy on demand so that anytime you have any free time or downtime, then you can engage in those things. And it's a matter of simply picking which of these things do we want to do today. Woo. All right. I know that that's a lot of information, but I hope that these three solutions help you in your journey of going back to school and engaging with your school days. But you guys know I have to bring it all together and tie this episode up with some joy gems, right? I know you guys were waiting for the joy gems, so here I am ready to drop them. The first joy gem that I have comes from 2 Corinthians 4.8, and it says, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And while the scripture sounds very heavy, um, (laughs) it is actually very applicable to life as a parent (laughs) as your children are going back to school. Because as moms, as parents, it can feel as though you're hard pressed on every side. And it can feel as though you are crushed, but you're not crushed. It can feel as though there's so much confusion and complexity in going back to school and engaging with all the new things that come up as you are going into school. But you are not in despair. 
well, hopefully you're not being persecuted, although there is a lot of that happening in the world right now. So please keep those who are around the world in prayer. I say all this to say that while these times come with a lot of heaviness and it comes with a lot of work and it comes with a lot of need for structure and rearranging and reprioritizing, this too shall pass. There's so much that is involved in this time, but it's only but for a short while. At some point, you'll get a rhythm. You will gain a routine. You will hit a flow, and then the process will become a lot easier. Trouble doesn't last always. <laughs> and the second joy gem that I have for you guys comes from Hebrews 12, 2. And it says, let's fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of God. And now I'm not comparing us as parents, mother specifically to Jesus, okay? Because we are not Jesus, but we all need Jesus. Can I get an amen? <laughs> but I share this verse because of the part where it mentions that Jesus for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame so that he could sit down at the right hand of God. Jesus, before he was sent to be crucified, knew why he was being crucified. And it's so funny because Arya actually spoke to me about this this morning when I was talking about the freedom and the joy that comes with our freedom because of the fact that we have faith, but how we were only able to gain this faith because of the fact that Jesus was willing to sacrifice himself so we would have access to faith in its entirety. And when I mentioned this to her, she said, but it's not good because Jesus had to die. Yes, but it's because he was willing to die that we are now able to receive the gift of our faith. It's because of his willingness to endure the pain of the cross and everything that came with it. The shame, the abuse, the um, degradation, you know, all of those things that he was willing to endure for the joy that he knew would come because of his willingness to take on that sacrifice. As parents, we sacrifice a lot. As moms, we sacrifice a lot. We sacrifice our time, we sacrifice our energy, we sacrifice our bodies. But we do it because of the joy that we know we'll gain as parents. This time and all the sacrifices that come with it will benefit not only our homes and our children as they become educated and they grow into fully purposed adults, but we'll also experience that joy in our societies. And with doing this, they're able to then make the world a better place. And I can go on and on talking about all of these things, but Aria is hungry. She's coming over here talking about how hungry she is. And I'm also hungry. So I'm going to wrap this episode up soon. But the point is, the moment you're able to set your eyes on the joy set before you, as you are able to think about the ways that your sacrifice in this moment is actually putting you on path for your purpose, let that be your motivation. We've pretty much made it through the meat and the potatoes of this episode, but I have a question for you. How many of you are entering a season of learning and self-discovery for yourself? How many of you are relearning or maybe you're unlearning and how could a journey to purpose help you on your quest to self-discovery. If you have an awareness of your need to find your joy or rediscover yourself or understand yourself better in this season of your life, I would love to invite you to visit my site, ericalassan.com, and take the joy quest. As you go through the joy quest, you'll be able to engage with a vision of what you really desire for your life to be like, feel like, look like, taste like and all the things but more importantly by the end of this self-paced program and it only takes 45 minutes to an hour you'll have clarity in your vision you'll have an understanding and a roadmap of what it takes to get you there as well as a process to make sure that you stay there but lastly and more importantly you'll have the ability to give yourself permission to actually pursue a life of joy unapologetically. And with this, you'll gain the confidence to live a life of freedom that will actually put you on path for your purpose so that you can start living the life of your dreams starting today. Not only do you deserve it, but the world needs you. They need your gifts, they need your talents, they need everything that you have to offer, but more importantly, they need you happy, whole, 
and healed. And the Joy Quest can help you get there. Overall, this has been a really long episode, but I hope that you guys enjoy it. If you like this video, if you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you are listening to this episode on a streaming platform where you can rate it or comment, please do that. I'd love to hear what some of your biggest takeaways from the episodes have been. But if you also found immense value in this conversation, share it. I would love it if you could share it with another person who would gain value from the conversation as well. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about me and my journey to purpose, you can follow me across social media at Erica Lasan. Instagram is mainly where I play. With all of that said, I want to thank you again for listening to this week's episode. And I look forward to chatting with you again next week as we join you to purpose. And we're going to be talking about making investments. Okay. I'm talking about investing in yourself, baby, because the greatest investment that you can make is you. I'm getting a little ahead of myself because I'm very excited. <laughs> for this conversation if you can't tell already so i look forward to chatting with you again next week and until then remember we are on this journey together one feel good thing at a time have a great week and we'll chat next sunday bye